elementary music teachers teach everyone. And so you're building the foundation for band, orchestra, and chorus. So keep up the good work. We're going to talk a lot about what you teach. The chicken or the egg? What comes first? That's too philosophical. I'm not answering that. But I will answer this one. Think about this for a second. Music or notation, what comes first? Music. Music! Yes, music comes first. Beginning a musical instrument involved developing new and challenging skills while also learning a new language. The new language is notation. The challenging skills, we'll go over this more, are coordinating breathing, fingering, holding a new instrument, etc., etc. So start with music and move to notation. As we begin to connect beginning band and orchestra with general music, we'll find more students successfully engaging in instrumental music. And I'll explain that more as we go. And that's the goal. These are my kids. They took, I took their picture and they're happy. How many of you like to see happy kids? And the growth in the elementary music curriculum has been promoted by the research of Kadai, Fire Oven, Orf, Gordon, Suzuki, Dalcros. Think about this for a minute. Do we know what is happening in our students' elementary music classes? You know, because you teach elementary <laughs> music and beginning band. That's what I do. And let me tell you something. Um, early part of my career, I was a high school, middle school band director and a department head in two school districts for 23 years. I took a break to get a doctorate. And I took a job, which I've been at now for five years, a grade three through five building, where I do three and four general music in grade five, beginning band, and I took conversational solfege that summer, and I was totally ready to do general music. And what I discovered was these practices were sort of a missing link for me. Um, and once, and I can teach better my beginning band students by knowing, by connecting to what's happening in the general music class. Of course, I'm a general music teacher. In general music, students sing every class. And as I sing week after week after week after week, they, it just there's a culture of singing. They sing and they love to sing. Songs from around the world in different languages. Singing is the expression of people and cultures around the world. It starts and ends with singing. We want people to sing in adulthood. Every student moves. I believe if kids are, are doing nothing, they're pro they might be learning nothing. So they have to do something when I sing or when they're singing. Um, Dow Crows, how many people are familiar with the Dow Crows methodology? A little bit. Um, concepts are taught through movement, phrasing. There's so much that happens through movement. <clears throat> Every student creates. We need to have our kids create. We need our future composers. We need to not have them afraid to improvise and not stuck with just notation. Students sing songs with solfege and rhythm syllables. This is the Kadai approach. Concepts are taught through songs. Students learn solfege and Rhythm syllables. Students sing through and with instruments. If they're playing the ukulele or the bucket drum, drums, they sing along. If they're playing the recorder, the syllables that we just did translate to the recorder. The skills from the elementary music classroom that help students find initial and lasting success in playing an instrument.
bathroom and these TVs. <laughs> 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 we're playing that for their warm up. It's amazing what kids can do when they sing first and learn songs and then play them. Aren't they awesome? <laughs> these kids, these kids are just so awesome. But did you notice he went, he wanted to come up to first position for F, and he went to sixth position. All the position for F, C didn't come out because he knew in his ear what sound was supposed to come out, and it came out, and they said, oh, I'm in the wrong position, I'll come back to the F, I'll come back to first position for the second F. But did you catch? Mm -hmm. In tune, if they can sing, they can play. Music, then notation. 50 years ago, I started playing the trombone. Leisure suits <laughs> and bell bottoms were popular. The pocket calculator <laughs> came out for the first time. We stored our information 50 years ago on floppy disks. <laughs> Pong, the first <laughs> video game, invaded our homes. And kids haven't stopped playing video games ever since. <laughs> Well, they should be practicing. <laughs> and Star Wars came into our house and took us to a galaxy far, far away. However, our instrumental method books have not changed much at all. 1953, Bellwin Band Builder came out. That's the book I used. They still use the same cover today, don't they? It's not a bad book. It just doesn't reflect the growth in our elementary general music program. It starts over with a particular emphasis on notation. Lesson one, whole note, whole note rest. The research that revolutionized elementary music education has not weaved its way into instrumental music education yet. I taught out of that Bellwin band method when I first started teaching. That's how I taught. But now that I know better, I do better. I'm not suggesting that everyone all of a sudden change the way they teach. But I am saying that if there's one idea that works for you here, take it home. Bill Gates, we overestimate what we can do in one year, and we underestimate what we can do in 10. So this is how I think of first year band. First year band is fifth year of music. It's not starting over. Build on what students know. They know more than ever before. I want to talk quickly about the first lesson. The first thing I do after I show them how to assemble the instrument and disassemble the instrument, then I take the mouthpiece or the reed and the, um, the, the mouthpiece. For clarinet, I use also the barrel. I don't want to hear. <laughs> and I don't want to hear the saxophone without the neck. Saxophone and neck. Um, and flute head joint. And I go, I just make sure they can all get a sound. By the way, I have a contest to see who can hold a note the longest. What they're learning right, in a, right away is long sounds make good phrases. What we want them to go is do, 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 and they'll do that. Learn mi, re, do, and practice long tones. So then the second thing I do on the lesson is E, D, C on the trumpet. D, C, B flat on the trombone, all right? Uh, I start flute with B, A, G, and then I quickly move them to D, C, B flat. It's just, <laughs> it's too much for the flute player. I want them to go home and play songs too. Now, go around the room, everyone play a long note. Hold it as long as you can, and they get a long tone. <laughs> By the way, I do it all year long. Next, send them home, able to play a few mi, re, do songs. Send them home. Yes, you can do hot cross buns. Once they learn mi, re, do, they can go home and play. In my case, in my method book that I use with them, they can play six songs. So I send them home able to play six songs. They come back, back and some of them, you know, still aren't 
struggling to make a sound, some of them can play six songs after the first lesson. And then we build on that. So here is my 11 leaps to literacy, because I've really thought, I want literate players, but I also want to hit 100%. I don't want kids to quit or be frustrated because they can't read notation yet. So here we go. The teacher sings a song for the students while they participate with movement or game for the song. And then the students sing that back to me. I will never show kids notation and say, isn't that a nice melody, play it. I'll teach them the song with the lyrics, and then we'll do the solfege, and then they'll play it. Students sing the song with the same movement of game. It's about the lyrics. The students sing the song with lyrics. Next, the teacher sings a song for the students using solfege syllables. Then, the students sing the song using solfege syllables, and hand signs are optional. Then the teacher sings a song using solfege syllables while the students finger along on their instrument. They're not singing yet. All they have to do is finger. That's all they have to do. Then the next step is they sing and finger the song using solfege syllables. Often, I will, most of the time, I'll sit at the piano and just go, My curriculum has a piano accompaniment, so I wrote out easy accompaniments. They got used to singing and fingering with my tempo and with my boom, tick, boom, tick, and so that they, that they play along. Do you see this multi-step process? It's not just, here's a notation, read it. Students sing and finger the song using note names, because they have to associate the syllables with the note names. Rhythm syllables and counting. Teacher sings, speaks the rhythm syllables, and then the students sing and speak the rhythm syllables, but then the teacher sings and speaks the counting. So they have the rhythm syllables, so um, they have the, you know, do day, do day, do day, do, do day, do day, do. Then I'll say one and two and three and four, one and two and three. So then, then they see that associated with the notation and say, oh, yeah, I, I get that. It's building on what I know. It's what we did in third grade. By the time the students play, it's like when I had to go E, D, C, D, E. Uh, they're ready to just sing the song through the instrument. They've done it so many times. They're ready to go, and they're all successful. Final step. Read the notation and play the song without any syllables or note names. And the result is happy kid. So here they are on, the, on this side of the page. They start on this side of the page and I have lyrics. Let us chase the squirrel up the hickory, down the hickory. Let us chase the squirrel up the hickory tree. So now they've sung it with lyrics. I don't even have to say look at it because they already know it. I did it in third grade. They played it on the recorder. Now it's time to play it in the instrument. They're just going to play it. It's a song they know. It's inside them. Now they're going to come over here. New instrument. Uh, underneath the notation is a solfege. Do, do, re, re, mi, so. Do, do, re, re, mi, mi. Re, 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 do, do, re, re, mi, so. Do, do, re, 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 do. Nice to see a mouthing impact there. Um, then they're going to say it on letter names while they finger. Uh, B, F, B, F, C, C, D, F. B, B, C, 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 D, D, C, C, C. While they finger. Then, oh, by the way, one and two and three, but I'm not going to say that. I didn't write... The, the rhythm syllables in, because I didn't want a Gordon book. I didn't want a Kadai book. I, want, I just wrote the counting in. Plus, there were too many things underneath. Do whatever <laughs> rhythm syllables you want, and then move to counting. Now we want to move to this side of the page. Is it, okay, let's just cover that up and see if you could do the notation, if you just read the notation. Because that's where we want them to get. We want literate musicians. 
I, I just want to make sure that I get as many kids as possible there. This is this method book that I'm sending you home with. It's available on JW Pepper if you're interested in looking at it. I'm sending you home with a flute version so you'll get to see it. Um, 50 songs. And my kids learn all 50 songs in their first year of playing, it, playing wow. an instrument. And there's songs from around the world too. Traditional method has a lot of tired old folk songs. They haven't really updated it. Um, but Kadai and Firebomb they encourage us to develop our own folk songs. And Let Us Chase a Squirrel is a do, re, mi, so song, so B flat, C, D, F, but once you learn that, so is theme from the New World Symphony. So are songs like Fuba Wuba. So are other songs, there's four or five songs. Once they learn B flat, C, D, I move to F. Um, and then there's five or six songs that they can play. And then I add an E flat. Then there's a ton of songs they can play. Uh, I add one at a time, and then they play songs. Are they motivated to practice when they play songs? Yes. Do they look ahead in the method book to learn new songs? Oh, Dr. Smith, I looked that note up on YouTube because I wanted to play. I wanted to move ahead in the book. And once they can play a note, they can do it. Um, so I start out in book one. I just separated. My first edition had book one and book two. I had all in one book. But do, re, mi, so songs. Unit three, adding fa. Unit four, adding low T. So low concert, concert A, F sharp on the saxophone. Do, do, la, twinkle, twinkle, of course. Uh, horns, oh my God, those poor horn players. Start in <laughs> A, G, F. Like, I just do a prep, prep lesson where I have them play an E, D, C. And then when they're ready, they jump up to AGF. Usually, give them a couple lessons to play EDC. Book two, I move them unit seven to the key of E flat. So they play all the same Mi, Re, Do songs on G, F, and E flat. B flat blues scale. I have to show you this. This is from some of my students last year. That's the one. It's over there. It's all right. This is a song I wrote called The School Day Blues. Now they're going to trade two, improvising. tones are the key to long phrases. So long tones. Um, and, and that's something that will never change. At least I don't think so. <laughs> do to do. I have to show you this. This is a boy called Luca who I have. He's a prodigy. He plays in my recorder group in fourth grade after school. He got a saxophone for Christmas. So I, but he can play everything on the recorder already. So I said, well, just come in and play for me after school. I wanted to just make sure he could play a long do and he could have the right sound, could leave a sack and play on, on their own. <laughs> you don't know what they're gonna get. So, <clears throat> so three or four weeks later, I recorded him on lesson seven. kids can do when you start with singing, move to solfege, he, you can see he taught himself. The, 
So I'm afraid that our <laughs> brightest kids get it with the notation, but not all the kids. Here is my method book. It's on J.W. Pepper's Time to Play. You could get a digital, digital uh, download of the whole method book for every book. You can get uh, every book for $175. If you decide you want to, please wait, um, because the second edition is better than the first, and it's coming out in May. Um, so now the only other thing before we talk, just about question, here is a Facebook group that I started um, a year ago called Connecting Band with General Music. If you're in this group, when my second edition comes out, I'll announce it on that group, if you're interested. But it starts and ends with singing. Band is for everyone. It's the best thing I've ever done in my life. And it's so good, we have to make sure we include everyone. It's the same for us. You know, can our kids play the national anthem in unison? Because they're not gonna play the third trumpet part for their family. You know, they're not going to play that 20 years later, but they might play the national anthem. No, they have to learn it for parts for the football game or for, the, for, the, for whatever. But happy birthday. Can they play happy birthday? Can they, what songs can we give them? You know, songs from other countries, patriotic songs. Who's going to keep these songs to the next generation? I ask myself that question, that same question all the time. That... Am I doing enough to prepare them for middle school band when they have to read that part? The literacy has to happen. So I, I'm just going to leave it at that, that I, I ask myself that same question. All right? They're learning a lot, you know, but we can't forget the literacy. The literacy that's why I say 11 leaps to literacy. I thought about this one day and said, I have to move them towards literacy. Am I doing enough? No. Am I getting closer? I think so. You could take whatever songs you're doing or whatever songs your general music teacher is doing. You know, they might be different songs of mine. You could take and just, they already know the soul fish to that. So we go back to that question is, do we know what's happening in our element, a student's elementary music classroom? If we do, we build on that. So um, that's that. What else? Anything else? You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you.